it is time for another Pink Hibiscus Live. And I'm really, I'm excited every week for my Pink Hibiscus Live. So I'm really excited about this one in particular because in the research and getting prepared for this live, I've learned so much about honey. So tonight we are speaking to Fiona Moffat from Rosebury Honey, who is a backyard beekeeper and has basically transitioned from the corporate world into, gosh, keeping bees in the backyard and producing the most delectable honey. I'm a huge honey fan. I'm actually, I'm allergic to bees. So I'm scared of bees, but I love what they produce. And I always knew that there was so much more to honey than it just being super delectable on crumpets and in tea and <laughs> all of that sort of thing. But it's not until I did some more research that I found out just how amazing this product is. And it's not just honey that bees produce that is amazing. There is another substance that we're going to chat about. I'm just adding fee now to our live. So Fee's going to talk to us about her experiences and also how amazing honey is. Hello, Miss Fee. Hey. Look at you. Stunning Hello. hair. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and is my lighting okay? You can see me all good. It is. Yeah, I probably maybe angle the camera just a little bit down so that we get more of a face. I'm loving the background. Are you in the backyard? <laughs> no. <laughs> Gorgeous. No, it's my um, plant obsession. So I am um, uh, Oh, well, your you, plant obsession. Um, going to Maculata. Sorry. That's exactly what I thought it was. Um, I'm glad you mentioned yes. that because I was wondering, is that a begonia yes. immaculata? And my theory was correct. <laughs> spot on that. Spot How are on. you? <laughs> Very well. So Thanks you're a botanist as well as a beekeeper. So <laughs> I'm yes. excited to have you here. It's um, So for those of you um, who don't know us, um, we actually met a about six, was it six years ago? At was, least, yeah. Yeah, about that time when Fee came to work at P&O Cruises and she was working in supply chain and sitting just an, an aisle away from me um, in entertainment and we just hit it off. We started um, working. She was a huge help to me with getting some amazing speakers for our food and wine cruises. And we sailed on an epic one together. <laughs> we did. We did. <laughs> so Fee's been my go-to when it comes to looking for anything, looking for any sort of product. She is my supply chain guru. And it is just really exciting to have you here to talk about your passion project, I guess we could call it, Rosemary okay. Honey. Absolutely. So, I would like to know, how did you make the trend? How did you start beekeeping? How does one just go, you know what, I'm going to just start beekeeping in my backyard? I suppose it's, it's always been on my to-do list um, and something that I've always thought in the back of my mind, I want to be a beekeeper. I want to, I want to have honey from my backyard and, and, um, I also want to have chooks as well, but I'm not allowed to. But, but definitely um, something that I, I did a lot of research into. Um, Michael, my other half, um, purchased this place about 30, 30 years ago and the previous owners had beehives. So when they um, moved out, they um, took their beehives with them at, at, late at night because you can really only move them late at night and they dropped one. So there was literally thousands and thousands of bees all over the floor and it was kind of like, see ya, you're now the beekeeper. Um, so Michael, it was actually Michael who got me into oh beekeeping. Crazy stuff. 
and um that's and, and like my nightmare stuff. right there <laughs> I've heard, I've heard. So he, he had bees on and off over the years and um, just had one or two hives and um, and it just sort of, it, it started from there. He did do a lot of over, overseas travel at the same time. So the bees, you know, he had them and then they, they would swarm and then he would, um, you know, get new bees. And, and, and um, when I moved in, about 10 years ago, it was, um, yeah, just a swarm turned up, uh, which a swarm is like um, usually the football-shaped um, cluster of bees that happened in spring. And, um, so like in, in My Girl. Gee, it would be like. great. To be. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 totally. And, um, and he goes, well, I've got some beekeeping equipment in the top of the, the garage, and that was it. We... we rescued the swarm that was off the rose bush I think it was at the time and um it really started from there yeah how so it's only rescue a, a swarm I, so in, in oh, sorry I think there's a delay spring, uh, we're up we're we're on we're right now. We're, we're good. I just think there's a, de a delay in, <laughs> in um, so it sounds like I'm speaking over you. I'm not meaning to. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so in, in spring, basically a, a colony of bees, which consists of one queen and queen bee and 90% female um, bees and then a 95% um, a, a female bees and then a drone, then some drones, which are the male bees, um, they basically, and um, uh, from the existing colony, um, for various reasons, it can be congestion or um, uh, a failing queen. And um, yeah, basically they look for a new home and that's where I come in and, and um, catch them, save them and give them a new home. So that's, that's what happened. It, was, it wasn't something wow. that I, you know, purchased a colony it, it just just started from there and so and now you're saving bees and saving hives from other properties as well yeah so so there's there's a lot of beehive I mean there's been an increase in urban beekeeping so definitely in Sydney um, which is wonderful to see um, but but each spring, that colony, one colony becomes two. Um, so they can uh, end up in crazy places. So whether it can be on windscreens of cars or buildings or compost bins, um, just, just weird places that they consider home um, or, or, or temporary home. And that's where I come along and, and, and save them before the... Um, the uh, pest guys come and spray them or, or kill them and then give them a safe home. So I'll rehome them, yeah. So how I'm, I'm trying to visualise, So because I saw, I think it was on Instagram, was there a, a, a swarm or a hive, I guess, a, a swarm? I'm using the wrong terminology. Like in the wheel of a car? Was that, there was like... Yeah. I mean, <laughs> So that Captain. was down in <laughs> that was down in um, Darlinghurst, and that was near the one of the art, uh, art universities, I think. And and it, it was a colony that had lived happily in in a wall, in a brick wall. And then they um, spring came, they decided to split, um, and so the queen took off with with a certain. Um, members of her of Lenny and um, looked for a new home and that's where I came along. I had the, the call because um, I'm a swarm collector, like a ghostbuster, but I'm a swarm collector. I love and, it. <laughs> and um, I come along and um, scoop them up basically and give them a new home, a safe home before, you know, before the car reversed or, or went forward on them and, and squashed them or, you know, People call the police, people call the fire brigade. Um, but, um, yeah, it, eventually it gets back to a, a beekeeper and that's where we step in and, and save them, rescue them and give them, yeah, a safe home. Wow. I, 
I have the Ghostbusters theme like in in my head now. It's like, who are you gonna call? Fee Muffet. It's just gonna play now in my head yes. for like the rest of the. <laughs> The line. I, I want a video. <laughs> I want a video of you coming in in your in your gear. You know, yes. like saving the day. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's 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 a lot of fun. Um, and there's always a, a a big crowd, or not a big crowd, but there's always a crowd of people that are just um fascinated by what we're doing and um. Uh, yeah, and it's a good time to educate people about what's really happening, and it's a natural, um, it's a natural part of of um, a bee's, um, I suppose, life. And um, uh, yeah, it's it's awesome. It, it's it's a lot of fun. I look forward to it. Normally happens um, September, October, um, and um, yeah, it's something that we do a lot of preparation for to to go and. Yeah, be, have the equipment and the and the time to rescue the bees. So it's great. Wow. So so speaking of bee lives, I feel like this needs to be added to your business card. <laughs> but um, can you explain a little bit around why bees are important to the environment? Because there's been a lot of talk about this over the past few years. It's something that I don't personally really understand. I'm just so scared of them. <laughs> so I would, I would love to find out more. Sure. It's, it's probably got a lot to do with um, food security, which is, which is a really important topic at the moment. So without bees, our lives would look extremely different we think COVID and and the isolation um was was a bit tough on us without bees we we have no coffee we have no chocolate we have no cotton we have we don't have a lot of a lot of things so um that that's ultimately why they're important for for food security to ensure that we have yeah enough food so without bees you know pollination looks a little bit um different um, we rely on humans to hand pollinate, and um, and also, I mean, honey. Honey's amazing. Honey's delicious. Honey's so important to us, and it never it never goes off. Um, so it can. Forever, I know. Forever, I discovered that forever. recently like, as well. No other food source. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Nick was so saying it's, um, um, it's, earlier it, it, that apparently. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just. You go. No, I finish. All good. Yeah. So Nick was saying um, earlier that there was an Egyptian tomb that was found um, to contain a pot of honey. And they said that you could eat it now. It's thousands of years old and yet you could still eat it. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I love Ainsley has just jumped on and said, no chocolate without bees. Give me a hive ASAP. Yes. <laughs> so true, Ainsley. Yes. Yeah. Or coffee. Yeah. I, I had, I guess I just didn't understand um, because I think as someone who has been, ha has had a fear of bees for so long and I love honey and appreciate honey. I and I, I guess other people would have as well just not thought about um, a world without bees. Um, I think I was telling you on the phone a couple of weeks ago that I don't know if it's a sign or a bad sign or bad juju, but um, everywhere I move, the only bees that I find are like either dead bees or they're dying, like they're crawling on the floor dying. So I'm like, is that because they know I don't like them? Or is there something that I can do? Not that I don't want to attract them to my house, but is there something? What are they looking for? Why are they coming to my backyard to die? <laughs> it can, it depend, really depends on the season. So if it's really hot in summer, um, they're probably looking for water. Um, yeah. So it's important that we put some, I have a bird bath out the front and I happily put champagne corks in there, collect the champagne corks, Put them in there because bees can't swim, um, and oh. so they they float on the the floating champagne corks and collect water. So they can use that water back as a um, take it back to the hive and use it for 
make their little air conditioning system to cool down the hives. Um, yeah, so so it could be that unless they've been sprayed, which is a really really sad sight to see. Um, usually they have their little um, their little tongues out if they have been sprayed, and that's the end of their life. Um, so you know if there's you know a, a, a little straw out the front, that's unfortunately you know it could be from neonicotinoids or, or, or some sort of spray um uh in in the summer they uh when it's they're they're foraging a lot it's it's they're, they're really exposed to the elements so um yeah it tends to shorten their life so um it could could be for a variety of reasons that's a great idea though so in order for us to help the bees um, we can put bowls of water out with champagne corks. Great reason to drink some more champagne. <laughs> and and that, that's something that we can do. Is there anything else we could do? Plant flowers. Plant flowers, lots of flowers, colourful flowers. Um, if you've got a herb garden or a veggie garden, let it go to seeds. Um, you know, let the flowers bloom. Let the, let the bees come and forage um, for nectar. Um, um, put water out. Um, don't use neonicotinoids like Roundup with those um, harsh um, sprays. And, and, and if you do come across a swarm, um, September or October is peak time for swarms, um, uh, call a beekeeper. We, we will happily, <laughs> ding, ding, beekeeper fee, yeah. um, uh, <laughs> come and collect, the, collect the, the swarm. And usually we do it... Um, uh, for no cost as well. No, so we, we will happily do it, especially if it's in our vicinity, um, uh, and rehome them. And do you know what? Nine times out of ten, we'll go here. Here's a jar of honey when when it's um when that swarm is produced, just as a as a thank you. Oh wow! Well, Ginger Beats has just asked if beekeeping is a possible career option. And she said you're in Rosebury, so it's so, very urban. It is very urban. Um, so for me, it's it's not. It's only a hobby. Um, I would love to have it as a full time job, but it is seasonal at the same time. But there's definitely full time beekeepers. Commercial beekeepers generally have about a hundred hives. Um, so um, yeah, definitely, definitely career options. There's a few courses that Tokal College do, which is up in Patterson. Um, near the Hunter Valley or in the Hunter Valley. Um, and that's a good start if you want to progress into a um, commercial um, beekeeping career. Wow, okay. And, yes, cheers for the bees, Cass and Elaine. <laughs> yes. And the Guilty Diner. I'm Thanks, all for Cass. more champagne. Well, there you go. Drink, drink more champagne, Hayden, and then pop those bowls out with water and float your corks to save the bees. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, you so, can also um, get get those big foam noodles, and you know the foam noodles for the ports, those colourful, yeah. colourful things. You can also chop them into like a salami, um, and and float them in in your um, in a bowl of water or or something, and they'll also float on them or a bowl of marbles with water. Lots lots of things you can do. Just think of a little insect that can't swim, and um, they need to um, yeah. Lots of, lots of options there. Awesome. Ginger Beats has just come on and said that it seems like very hard work, heavy lifting and lots of stings, which leads very well to one of my other questions. Can you tell us some horror stories? Um, I, I'm probably a bit immune to stings now. So when I, I remember when, you know, coming into the carnival office with, with you and I had a big welt on my, my leg like that. Um, <laughs> um, but now I know what to do when I get stung or, or, or give advice. So it, basically, if, if you feel that sting, just sting her out straight away. Okay? That's the best thing to do. That'll stop the, the, um, the venom from, from pumping into your system. And usually... Um, can I can I do that? Usually you yeah. get a, a like a credit card or your or your nail and just scrape it out. 
Oh, so no tweezers. Don't, no tweezers. Just grab your nail or, or, or something, you know, uh, uh, just scrape it out. And the sooner you get it out, the better your recovery will be. But I have been stung. Oh, wow. Um, I do like to push push my luck when I, goes into the bee, when I go into the beehives. I don't always wear protection. <laughs> and um, getting stung on the face oh, is see. great. So I normally I normally do puff up or, you know, get a few, you know, lose my sight for a couple of days or something like that. But that's only because I've been down the back, haven't had a mirror to pull the stinger out and, um, yeah, just just my, my neglect, my fault entirely by not wearing the, the proper protection. So um, I've got my well, suit Well, that here. is great advice. Oh, really? So, yeah. Our suits are pretty industrial um, they've got many layers of, of I don't know if you can see that of, yeah. of mesh um, and protection and um, yeah we wear them for a reason but then there's a lot of people that that don't wear bees um, don't wear bee suits or beekeeping suits and and just rely on um, smoke and and moving slowly and calmly and and that yeah it looks um it looks so old fashioned like a kind of old you know horror movie picnic at hanging rock type you know out with the beak <laughs> I'm going back to the whole horror aren't I I really need to let that go. <laughs> My girl did a number on me when I was a child <laughs> yeah that was, that, was, that was sad um, we also wear. We also wear gloves, um, which these Good. look like they're filthy, dirty gloves, but it's actually um, propolis on the gloves, um, which is, so these are these are leather gloves, but this is all, all propolis, which is the antibacterial um, uh, product that the bees produce. So we might look like we're yeah. dirty, but we're super clean, us beekeepers. Well, we're going to... We're going to talk about propolis a little later on. Um, Ginger Beats has just mentioned the focus on local production at the moment and perhaps local businesses um, might be interested in buying your honey. So why don't we jump across to Rosebury Honey and um, can you tell us about the unique way that you actually sell? Sure, sure. So I have um, a, an honesty system. Um, I've always, I, I grew up in the country, so I've always been a, a big fan of buying produce at the farm gate. So whether it's flowers or watermelons or oranges or anything like that. So, um, uh, yeah, just decided to replicate that into the city. So we have the honesty system out the front of our house. Um, we fill the jars up. Um, we have an honesty letterbox so that people put the money in and we've sold lots and lots and lots of jars and um, every single jar is accounted for, which is amazing. I, I really believe in giving people the, um, the opportunity to do the right thing and they've, they've proved, us, proved us right. Sometimes um, we, we might be missing a dollar um, when, when we count the money and, and reconcile it against the jars and, um, you know, five days later we'll get an envelope with, you know, 20 cent pieces in them making up the dollar <laughs> going, sorry, I was short or, or we oh, find wow. it in the, in the bushes. So it's, it's, it's lovely. It's, I, I live in the most amazing um, suburb in Sydney that, that really are honest and love the honey, love the bees and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. So it's a stand that we put out people help themselves and, and put the money in the letterbox that's it it's awesome it's just amazing i love how old school um it is and how it, it it really does sound like it brings a community together you know i want to live in rosebury <laughs> <laughs> It's wonderful. Um, Ian just asked if you sell online. So no, Ian, she just sells via the honesty stand. And if you, um, when we finish the live, if you go to the post um, on our on our Instagram page and scroll across the one with Fiona's photo on it, um, advertising tonight, um, scroll across too and you'll see the honesty stand there. Um, 
and there's heaps of photos on the Rosebury Honey page as well. It's um, it's just gorgeous too. This beautiful kind of antique table, it's it's phenomenal. And you sell out all the time because yeah. I haven't had it for years. All the time. <laughs> I don't think I'm popular with the Rosebury community at the moment because they're all wanting more honey, especially during COVID and and to get them through the flu season in in winter but we just don't have any at the moment. Um, there could be a small amount in the hives, but we need to leave it for the bees to use as, um, uh, as their stores over, over winter in case yeah. there's no flowers in bloom. But, um, yeah, it, it, it's unlikely, but um, when I do open up the, the lid, it will decrease the temperature um, and the bees don't like it too cold. They need that same temperature all throughout the year. So... Um, unfortunately, I can't even up, lift up the lid. But wow. um, come September, October, November, right through to April, heaps of honey. Yes. Well, it looks like Tam Clive said it's worth the trip to Rosebury. And Trudy, I agree with you. Rosebury honey is delicious. It is the best honey I have ever tasted. And on that note, how what? there's so many different types of honey. So what... How, do you yeah. plant certain flowers to make it taste a certain way or can you explain the different types of honey that are available and why? Sure. So we have um, what I call a multifloral or polyfloral honey. Um, so the bees in our backyard fly within five kilometres of, of the hives. So they can forage on literally thousands and thousands of different botanicals. And that's what gives it the unique flavour. Um, so it changes from batch to batch depending on what's in um what's flowering at the time. So, uh, it, you know, I, I do get people go, oh, have you got a, a Manuka honey or a red cum or an iron bark or something? But because of where the bees are situated, where the hives are, it, it's really up to the floral diversity in the area. Um, if, if it is an iron bark that, that's likely to be in a very rural setting, um, rural and remote setting and, and therefore they flor forage on, on just that um, flower or that just that botanical. Yeah. So why is Manuka honey, you know, the one that is being the best? Oh, that's a pretty controversial um, question. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's, it really depends... <laughs> It is. Um, um, and the new, uh, it, it, it just has very <laughs> special properties, basically. Super, even though, you know, raw honey and, and urban honey and, and um, monofloral honeys all have very special um, properties, but Manuka is, is, they've done a lot of research and proven that it can help with wound healing and, and all a variety of, of health properties yeah so a lot of research has been done for into manuka honey so earlier you mentioned the propolis on your gloves and i since we chatted a while ago and actually a long while ago and you mentioned propolis i have been delving deep into what it actually is so it's another substance that bees produce that is kind of like a resinous substance, right, that holds the, uh, the hive together. Um, I've written notes so I don't get it wrong. And it acts as, oh, yay, here's, here's some I prepared earlier. <laughs> Just so happened I have some propolis here. As um, you do. Yeah, so that's, that's, um, that's a ball of propolis basically from, from our hives. Wow. It's, but it's kind of magical because it's antibacterial but they're also conducting studies um and using propolis in cancer treatments um and cancer prevention that little ball of magic thank you bees absolutely absolutely and it smells um it smells like 
honey or, or, or beeswax, but just that little bit more um, sour. And it's very, um, I mean, it's it's quite cold in here now, but it's it, they use it as so it's, it's quite um, yeah. squishy as well. So does so it that's, sit? Um, that's just some propolis. Does it sit? So I'm kind of thinking of like the shelves that you take out of um a hive with the honeycomb where is the where is the propolis in that is that like around the edges just kind of seal it or exactly they'll use it wherever they find a gap um and, and they will it's it's like their putty or their glue so that that's what they um yeah that's what they use so in a frame and i looked to see if i had a frame in storage um to show you but just say that that's a frame it'd be along the, the edges generally. And when oh, we okay. um, uncap the, the cells, um, I often scrape off a little bit of propolis. I have a few um, uh, elderly ladies in the community that, that love propolis. I don't know what they do, but I'm sure they make amazing concoctions um, with it, but it's, they really rely on it for, their, for the health benefits of, of propolis. I think you can um, make a, a tincture with um, uh, in vodka and stuff, oh, good stuff. That's that's what they're doing. They're, <laughs> they're like, I need my vodka propolis fix. <laughs> Fee, hook me up. It's, it's my medicine. <laughs> yes. Just taking my evening tincture. <laughs> exactly, and it's um, uh, yeah, they 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 love it. They 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 come knocking for for, for propolis definitely. Oh, that is fabulous. And it's a great segue into talking about honey and propolis in skincare. There are a lot of skincare ranges out there that utilize propolis for its benefits, but I wanted to dig deep into honey. And I swear, I've now just started on a journey where I have to, I, I we need to collaborate. I really, really would be so interested and yes ginger beets you've just come up and said that my my products are vegan and how do i sit with bees well i don't use honey or um honeycomb or any derivatives in any of my skincare um but i'm interested in looking into it and looking into how it could be done ethically if it could be done ethically and whether it would align with my values um, so that's literally what I'm looking into now. So thank you for that question, Ginger Beats. It's um, exactly what I was doing research on today. Um, yeah. But honey is very, uh, there are so many benefits. It's antibacterial, antimicrobial, it's moisturizing, it's age defying, it's great for fine lines and wrinkles. It has got such a huge heap of benefits that um, you really can harness and you can harness yourselves by making up some little DIY skincare products like masks and exfoliants. Um, Queen Cleopatra and Nefertiti used to use honey in their milk baths, you know, back in the day. And the evidence of honey use goes back thousands and thousands of years. And I found out something very interesting did you know that the term honeymoon actually comes from the, the ancient Egyptians? They used to make honey-based, hot honey-based beverages for a month. Every day they'd drink them for a month after someone got married as a good luck um, kind of thing. And that's where the word honeymoon came from. Wow. No, no, I, I, I didn't know that. That's amazing. It's so random, but they, yeah. they've seen evidence of bees and hives in um, hieroglyphics found in ancient Egyptian burial tombs. And, and it was one of those things where once I opened the, the you know, <laughs> the, the door, I just like plunged deep into the rabbit hole of honey. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I just think that there's, there's so much that you can do with it. So I've actually put together some skincare recipes and I've popped them live on the website. Um, they literally went live five minutes before this. Um, oh, so I'm going to walk you through some. You can tell me what you think, B, 
because we're all going to learn very soon that you're a skincare aficionado. So, um, but <laughs> don't worry if you don't have a pen and paper because you can head to pinkhibiscus.com.au, just click on blogs and then skincare tips and rituals and all the recipes are there along with some of those fun facts that I just shared. Um, Ginger Beats has just said that Eastern Europeans have been drinking honey wine for millennia. Slovakians drink Medovina, like the Germans drink mead. There you go. Oh my goodness, Ginger Beats, you're a wealth of knowledge. Thank she you is. for joining us. I just <laughs> need to show you this um, amazing product um, that my, um, my beautiful friend Tammy made me for my birthday um, from um, Rosemary Honey. Um, and and it, yeah, it's amazing. And I'm sure that you've got more information, but it is just such a gorgeous um, skincare. It, it, beautiful ingredient, anti-inflammatory, and all of that. But um, that's that's your area of expertise for sure. <laughs> I, I I think that we both know you have a very a very big finger dipped in the skincare pot too. So. <laughs> I've learned so much from you over the years about skincare. It's fantastic. I love it. But where you say it's anti-inflammatory, something um, that is super simple, and all the recipes that I put together are utilising raw honey. So actually, in saying that, Fee, could you explain um, what raw honey is and how it differs and can we just get it from the supermarket if we can't, if rosemary honey is out of stock? Yes, yeah, so there is um, a, a few lines in the in the in Coles and Woolworths at the moment with with raw honey. So I think Beechworth is doing some um, Capilano. I think also have a, a raw honey range. So it just basically means it's not heat treated. Um, the beauty of buying from your local beekeeper, um, which I'm sure there's local beekeepers in every suburb. Um, you've just got to find us. Um, and, and, and we basically extract, we don't heat treat our honey. So it keeps all those amazing, um, yeah, properties of, of the honey there instead of, you know, pasteurizing it and, and um, doesn't make it as potent as, as what it could be. Yeah. So raw honey is, is what rosemary honey is and a lot of uh, sell to, to people. Is just means it hasn't been heat treated. So, if honey can be, you know, has no expiration date, why is it heat treated? Or heat treated? Why do people do that? To, um, you know, you see those squeezy. Um, it, it's to make it more. First of all, it's to stop it from crystallizing, so it doesn't turn into a solid mass. Um, and to make it more um, viscous to, to squeeze out of those um, squeezy bottles. And, you know, some people, um, even some of my friends, Trudy Maloney, um, think that, um, you know, when it crystallises, it's no good. But, but um, you know, you can return it back to its, its liquid state by gently heating it, like in the... In the Ideally, on a beautiful summer's day, put your crystallized honey outside in the sun, let it warm up naturally, and, it, and it'll return to its um, beautiful liquid state. But it, it, it's basically as a part of blending honey and to make it more, um, more of a liquid state. Yeah, so you can spread it or squeeze it or... Yeah. Okay, very interesting. Trudy, I'm I'm with you. I thought that as well until I found out that there was no expiration date on it. <laughs> Trudy now knows. And she's yeah. a big supporter of um she goes to the farmers markets and um buys local honey from her area, which is awesome. Oh, that's fabulous. I need to search for if anyone out there knows of local beekeepers in the P Parramatta area, please reach out to me. <laughs> I need I need to find someone. <laughs> But um, back to the DIY, DIY skincare recipes, one of the easiest things that you can do if you do suffer from blemishes or bites, I woke up the other night actually, I got bitten by like a repeat mosquito, I've still got the bite, numerous bites just underneath, it was very annoying. And what you can do is get a cotton bud and some raw honey 
and all you do is place it on the bites or the blemishes and it will take the redness away it will help with inflammation and it's antibacterial so it's fantastic in healing it so that's number one it's not really a recipe but i had to pop that in so number two i put together a bit of an iso skin mask um which was a, another very simple um concoction that you can make using one tablespoon of raw honey two drops of lavender and one drop of tea tree oil so wow. what this is going to do it's going to detox the skin i know a lot of people were experiencing what everyone was dubbing iso skin because they weren't getting out as much they were probably eating a little bit worse than they normally would <laughs> getting into those snack shelves and you know oh my gosh I had a whole section of my pantry was just snacks um so this is really great for detoxing purifying but still maintaining the moisture in your skin which is something that I preach whenever I can because a lot of people would think that you need to take get rid of all the oil and get rid of all the moisture to treat blemishes and it's actually the opposite so that's a really great um a really great mask for that with all these masks um i recommend cleansing beforehand cleansing afterwards and then spritzing applying eye cream or moisturizer as you normally would and you leave the mask to sit for 15 to 20 minutes um it's a very interesting feel on the skin it does it it feels it feels gooey um it's definitely not to be used as a sleep mask no lying down or touching anything with your face <laughs> um but it really is so nourishing um a really great idea is to pop on this mask and then hop in the bath and just create an absolute beautiful self-care ritual the steam will also help the mask um penetrate the skin um and i mean take a note out of queen cleopatra's book wipe it off with a washer and let it stay in the bath and voila there's your honey bath queen cleopatra <laughs> beautiful sounds lovely sounds gorgeous uh, it, <laughs> um another one that i put together was a nourishing mask which is one tablespoon of raw honey two tablespoons of plain natural Greek yogurt um, and you just mix it up and that's great for a, a wonderful infusion of moisture. And if you want to make a bit of an exfoliating mask, everyone knows I love my two you know, products that do two things. This is exfoliating and uses a mask. You can blend one to two tablespoons of oats, depending on how much of an exfoliation you want. So blend it until it can, comes down to like a kind of granulate powder. And you mix that with one tablespoon of honey and half a uh, ripe avocado. And uh, when you apply it, rather than just applying it as you would a mask, you actually massage it into the skin um, to exfoliate, but then you let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes as well before wiping off, uh, wiping off with a, a warm face washer. So all of those recipes are at pinkhibiscus.com.au under blog and skincare tips and rituals. Um, but you inspired me, Fee. Awesome. <laughs> love, 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 love. It's, um, it, there's so a, heading there's into... Also the... You go. <laughs> There's um the curly curly hair girl method as well, and they use um a, um which is a, a a way of treating your hair and nourishing your hair, especially if you've got waves. And they recommend using honey as a conditioner. Really, a hair conditioner. So a deep conditioner where you put it in and leave it, and then I can't imagine how it would wash out of hair. I'm going to give it a go. I'll let you know. That's a great tip. Yeah. Yeah. And really there's a lot of beekeepers that also when they get stung, the first thing they do is put honey on, um, raw honey from their hives on the, on the sting and that can also take down the, the inflammation as well. I love that. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. And yes, heading into flu season, my nonna and grandmother, uh, my nonna and mum first, whenever I had any sign of cold, 
it was honey, lemon, boiling water, done, sorted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I grew up on apple cider vinegar, honey, and boiling water. Or warm yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great blend as well. That's another yeah. fantastic product that has so many different uses. But um, let's jump across into skincare. I'm just wary of the time. I know Instagram loves kicking me off because I talk too much. So we're going to head into the Pink Hibiscus Beauty Rapid Fire. Uh, starting with, what is the best beauty advice you've ever been given? Um, it's, it's recent advice, um, is to buy a silk pillowcase. Yeah. It's good for your hair, good for your skin. And once you, you feel silk, um, and, and feel its benefits and, and, you know, wake up the next morning and not have creases on your face and, and your hair's not full of knots. Yeah. You'll, you'll realize. So silk pillowcases all the way. Definitely. It's amazing. You can, um, my style box actually has them. Naomi stocks them and um, has been long been an advocate of silk pillowcases. And so we've got them now. And the thing that I love probably most is that I can have my hair done and I can sleep and I'll wake up and it just looks the same. There's no <laughs> rubbing around. Your yeah. hair will look amazing tomorrow, Fee, because you sleep on a silk pillowcase. <laughs> And I have a really good hairdresser as well. <laughs> yes, I have a feeling I'm watching earlier. <laughs> um, what yeah. is the one skincare product that you can't live without? Cleanser. Definitely a, a foaming cleanser. Um, I need to wash my face morning and night. I just can't. It's like brushing my teeth and it needs to happen. So cleanser, definitely. I need to get you to try lotion cleanser. <laughs> I have yes. to. Yes. I have to. That's I also it. use my um my pink hibiscus um, spray all throughout the day because I work from home in air conditioning. So I'm... But Michael come here and I spray him and he loves it as well. Oh, oh your like rose quartz facial spritz. Love it, love it. But no, I need to send you a, cl a cleanser. I want you to, I want you to try it because I know you're a foaming girl. But yeah. I'm, it's, it's going to be my mission to convert you to sure. lotion. Yeah, not necessarily okay. to mine, just to a lotion cleanser. Just give it a go. Um, <laughs> what does your morning skincare routine look like? It's intense. It's cleanse. Um, I cleanse twice and tone. I put put serums on, moisturiser, moist, different moisturiser for my neck, um, put a, a um, by Terry Bomb de Rose. I spritz in the very end so with, with the rose quartz to set everything um, and just to give that little bit of extra hydration. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty intense. And then I do a, a light makeup just so I don't look scary on, on daily <laughs> Zoom calls. <laughs> so it's lucky you don't need to leave the house because it doesn't sound like you ever would. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm too busy. I'm too busy cleaning my cleaning my face and getting ready. Um, but I but I do have a daily Zoom call, which which keeps me in um, in check with um, making sure that I'm ready and my I, I've done all my all my um, my skin preparation because I can't skimp on it. I just can't. Can't skin. Well, I'm very proud of you, but I'm almost afraid to ask what your evening skincare routine looks like because most people don't do much in the morning and they do it all in the evening. So what does that look like for you? Yeah, my, I'm probably opposite. So my, my evening is um, cleanse twice again um, and then apply um, a, a tret, a vitamin A or retinol or, or whatever it is. Um, it's a prescription one. I slather that all over my face, go to bed, and, um, yeah, that's it. Eye cream, neck cream. Yeah, it's pretty easy at night. I'm fine with oh. that. There you go. It's, it's the opposite. That's very interesting. I love it. I've never heard that before. Um, so if we were to take a sneak peek into your handbag, what beauty products would we find? We would find um, by Terry Bomb de Rose lip gloss, um, which is my little little bit of, of three. Um, 
um, uh, but it's also a necessity. Definitely pink hibiscus hand sanitizer. Um, thank goodness you made that before um, we went into <laughs> ISO or, or just at the beginning. So I was lucky enough to get my hands on that. Um, that's in my car and also in my handbag. Um, and Love it. we've got a few scattered around the house as well. Um, uh, by Terry <laughs> Hyaluronic face powder. And um, that's it. That's it. I was expecting it to be so much more. <laughs> no. It goes on once and it stays on. I, I also, yeah, that, that's it. That's it. Very cool. So what piece of advice would you give your younger self? I think... Um, you may not like yourself or I may not have liked myself or been a huge fan of myself in my younger years, but, you know, other, other people do. And I still think that now. Some days I have off days and, and don't like myself, but, you know, then other people like me, I suppose, if I can say that. Um, How can you yeah, not? It's, You're Fiona it's, Muffet. <laughs> but it's, it's just, um, yeah, you might not like what you see, but other people do. That's probably... Probably my advice. We're, we're our harshest critics and, um, um, yeah, other people don't see our flaws like we do. That's so true. That's so true. Um, I think that we're exactly right. We're our own worst critic. Um, Nick actually said to me today that you are one of the nicest people he's ever met. Oh. So there you go. <laughs> And he, Love he, me. he refers to you as gorgeous face. So, oh. you know. <laughs> that's lovely. That's nice. We, um, that's, yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. You are an amazing woman. You are always someone who I can rely on. You have, um, you've been there in very interesting situations. <laughs> And you're kind of, even though we don't see each other often, I always feel like I could call you at any time and chat to you about anything. And you really are my guru on so many different levels. Yes, Trudy, Fee is wonderful. Um, and <laughs> so I do hope that you see that in the mirror and how amazing you are and you're gorgeous and your hair looks amazing. Very envious of your hair. I always have been. <laughs> we have had a question come through from Hayden um, at the Guilty Diner. What is your favourite food dish to use with your honey? Oh, I love, I'm, I'm, I love my cheeses and I love white mould cheeses and cheddars and aged cheddars and blue cheeses. So, um, honey or honeycomb over some cheese is is the bomb. That's that's my guilty right. pleasure. The saltiness, and you know, I've got some honeycomb here. Um, that's that's on on some oops, on some um, on some cheese is just amazing. It gives it that textural element and also the sweet and the sticky and and with the salty and it whether it's a crispy bread or, or um, cracker, it's just the best. Love it. I think that uh, is the perfect place to wrap up. <laughs> I really appreciate your time tonight, B. I cannot wait until your bees produce more honey in spring so I can get my fix to pop on my crumpet. <laughs> And where can people find you? I'm at um, the highs are at, at Kimberley Grove in Rosebury in New South Wales. So we're about four k's from the city. Um, but hop onto my Instagram or Facebook page, and um, I, I normally announce when we've got the honey about 24 hours or 48 hours before I go into the hives. We extract and then bang it out the front um, so the customers get the freshest, 
most um, delicious product possible. So it normally goes from hive to sale within, yeah, 24, 48 hours. So, um, yeah, Instagram or, or Facebook. Well, I will definitely be keeping an eye on both of those and I highly recommend everyone else does as well. Thank you so much for tonight and thank you as well for getting me to head down the rabbit hole of all things honey. It's been fascinating and I don't know if I would have done it had I not been about to chat to you. <laughs> so it's been wonderful. And um, everyone check out at Rose Green Honey. We're going to pop this chat up with some more questions that we asked me onto the website within the next week. I do have a little bit of a backlog, um, but it'll go up within the next week. And if you do want to head um, to pinkeyebiscuits.com.au to access those recipes, um, I would love to, to see your recipes photos, how you found them, please share on Facebook, shoot me an email um, on Instagram. We'd love to see what you do with, um, with the masks and exfoliants. Thank you again, Fee, and we will speak very soon. Thanks, Nat. Thanks for having me and thanks, everyone, for joining in. Thank Bye. you. Oh, yes, thanks, everyone. We're very engaging. Yes. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great night, Thanks. everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye.